Hey guys, welcome to another MapleStory 2 video. Today I'm going to be talking about dungeons and raids in this game. In MS1, as you know, the best gear came from fighting bosses that usually entailed party expeditions such as Zakum, Horntail, Pink Bean, Empress, and then the more recent Chaos Root Abyss, Lotus, Lucid, etc. Although obviously Nexon wanted us to gotcha our way up to the top tier with uh, some of the RNG based items, you know, Hilla's Rage, Magnus's Rage, stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, it was pretty much boss drops. In MS2, at least in the closed beta, it's kind of different. I'm sure during the actual game, bosses will be the premier means of acquiring the best drops, but there's something else now, there's dungeons and raids. Raids are technically boss expeditions, so that future exists, but dungeons, which are the MS2 equivalent of party quests, can also yield some pretty terrific equipment. In closed beta, there are 4 dungeons and 1 raid, but obviously there will be more, and tracking the value of the drops usually stems from its gear score. Gear score, it's a new feature in MS2, essentially calculates how important or powerful a piece of equipment is, for example, a 100 gear score piece of equipment is almost infinitely weaker than a 120 gear score item. And while mechanics do play a role in the game, most PvP rounds are decided by simply just having better gear score. After all, if we put an army of 10 men versus an army of 11, if they're both equally skilled, the 11 man army will win with probably very few if any casualties, because you can 2v1 one soldier, then 3v1, then 4v1, then 5v1, then 6v1, etc, etc, etc. That's just my small analogy as to gear score's importance, let's get back to the video at hand. Throughout the tutorial, you have been surely acquainted with the various low level dungeons that you usually took on by yourself, but upon reaching level 50, max level for the beta, there are 4 dungeons available to you in the closed beta. There's Tronix Bunker, Forgotten Vayar, Blue Shade Cave, and Hidden Darkness. These 4 dungeons are all relatively equal in difficulty, and they yield powerful equipment, which you can usually tell by the shade of it, which is technically potential tier in this game, purple being the most powerful based on what I've seen so far. The four dungeons are each catered towards a specific type of class by its rare drops, but the regular drops are equally as good and you can usually find them for any class. By taking on these dungeons, you receive rewards at the end, determined by random number generator of course, and these equips can be tradable once, so if you go in with a party of friends, then your friend gets an equip that you need, while you get an equip that they need, it's a win-win. Dungeons can be entered solo or with a party of four, and raids can be entered with up to a party of 10 players, which can be quite chaotic and laggy even for beefy computers. I've been experiencing a decent amount of lag on my own end, uh, even though I have a pretty strong computer. Uh, I think that's just mostly the game and not really your own computer's performance, so if you find yourself getting a drop of frames, I uh, don't think it's your computer, at least not entirely. Probably just Nexon not fully optimizing the game yet. I haven't yet acquired footage of any raids since my gear score is too low, and I've been pretty busy this weekend since I just came back from for college and also, you know, Mother's Day, but the gist of it is still the same. Raids are obviously far more challenging than dungeons, but the yield is all the more valuable should you succeed, of course. For the closed beta players, you might have noticed some world messages of people trading and or selling powerful equipment with attack ranges of over 2000, while yours is barely 1200 or so. That's also compliments to upgrading, but they set, acquire the said equipment through dungeons and raids. So you open up your dungeon directory and scroll down to your dungeon of choice, then you select enter with the party, which you should do since most dungeons are pretty difficult if not impossible to do by yourself. Uh, you'll then get transported into a pre-entry lobby where you can get your final preparations done, and your player is consolidated, which by the way, you can enter this lobby remotely no matter where you are so long as you're not in a cutscene or something. So before you enter the dungeon, you don't need to all be in the same map, you just open the dungeon and then your party members can teleport in from any location. How to do these dungeons, the only requirement as far as I know is just to meet its minimum level and gear score. Right now the level cap is 50, but in the actual release, the level cap will be level 100. The tutorial alone will get you straight to level 70, and from my experience, it took about roughly 10 hours of gameplay time to complete it, which is pretty fair in my opinion. You also get lots of equipment to bring your gear score up to par, so by the time you finish, you should be able to go into these dungeons without much problem. I think it was a good idea for Nexon to implement a baseline of gear score for players so they get an idea as to whether or not they can handle certain dungeons yet. Uh, the dungeons also scale higher level players down so that you don't just steamroll through dungeons, which is also a nice touch because I can already imagine how easy it will be to exploit dungeon and raid drops because higher level players, they can carry lower level players through the dungeons to catch them up very quickly and you won't become completely gutted. So funded players can still do more DPS and exceed relatively well, it just scales down so you don't just like absolutely destroy them. For the most part, the dungeons are the same, at least the level 50 ones. Obviously, we have no idea what the other ones are since closed beta takes us only level 50, but every dungeon is a basic run through. You kill monsters, then eventually reach the boss fight. Uh, I haven't seen anything that involves, let's say, completing a puzzle or anything like that. We might need to look at it later on when we get the higher level dungeons, but for now, pretty straightforward. It's kind of like the PQs in MS1, I guess, just with more PvE rather than just like puzzles. The bosses themselves are actually pretty difficult even for high gear score players because they do a lot more damage and they have a lot of health. 
That's also why priests are so valuable because of their support ability. Uh, as you guys know already in MS2, potions and restorative items, they're either regenerative or they're cooldown based, which means you can't really spam potions like power elixirs in the you know in MS2 as you could back in MS1. I know uh, more endgame bosses in MS1 had cooldowns for you know potions, but they were usually only like a couple seconds. And that's the same in MS2, but the restorative value is not that high. Uh, we don't have power elixirs as far as I know. You'll notice in some of these clips my HP drops down like crazy, but it goes right back up because of my friend healing me. Uh, that makes it that it definitely takes a lot of the stress away from dealing with you know keeping yourself uh, relatively healthy because when you have to take time to restore your HP and such, you won't be doing damage. So you say if you have a priest in your party, you will essentially eliminate any need for you to really worry about it and uh, just do as much damage as possible. Uh, there are definitely cases where bosses still do far more damage than your friend can heal. But for the most part, as you can see in the footage right here, uh, priests, they do they, they do a pretty good job at their job. Ideally, you, the way you want to play dungeons and raids is uh, two ranged DPS, one priest, and one frontline unit like berserker or knight. Alternatively, you can go two ranged DPS or two priests. Going full melee, it's an option, but the reason why it's not that effective is because while berserkers are colloquially known to be mostly overpowered, even though I think the class sucks, uh, they are main, mainly meant to be mobbing classes and their single target DPS, not the most fantastic. I'm not entirely sure if it's part of the AI or if it's mere coincidence, but the bosses seem more inclined to go after the ranged classes than the melees. I could be mistaken, just a quick note though to ranged classes, even if you have a priest or multiple priests, make sure you practice your spacing and kiting as if you do not have a priest to keep yourself alive, because most of the time the healers are going to take care of the tanks and the frontliners, so you got to keep yourself alive by yourself. That's not to say that you can't rely on your party members to help heal you up, it's just that like, you know, most of the time you'll be spaced a good like eight or nine tiles away. So it's going to be difficult for your priest to go back and forth to keep you alive. Anyways, that's it for the video. Any questions are welcome in the comment section below. But until the actual release, I won't be able to answer too many of them. And I doubt anyone else will either unless you went really far into KMS too, because we just don't have as much information. Uh, any information we have currently is limited to the closed beta. As for when the open release is coming out, I have people who are speculating that it might be coming out within end of May, early June, which would be fantastic. Uh, closed betas are usually an indication that the open release is going to be coming very soon. So let's hope for that. But uh, for now, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.